Names echo throughout history. They're only a scant few to survive 2,000 years to the present day, maybe only a dozen or so. But among them is the title of Caesar. Donned by dictators, kings, emperors, aristocrats, and even a salad, Caesar has survived. And with it has its most famous bearer, Gaius Julius Caesar. His name is known in Latin, Greek, Russian, English, and many other languages. But how has the name come down through history from Gaius Julius to Tsar Nicholas? Perhaps the most famous of all Romans, if only beaten by his grandnephew Octavius, Gaius Julius Caesar, known today as Caesar, was born in the July of 100 BC into the patrician family of Ulia. But it was his cognomen, or third name, that Gaius Julius would bear to fame. Caesar was the name used by Caesar's close relations, by Roman custom. But this name, Caesar, where did it come from? There are four common answers. That Caesar, or an ancestor, was born of a Caesarian section, in Latin meaning to cut. But this is unlikely. The operation was often fatal in antiquity, but it also may have come from the Latin Caesares, meaning head of hair, an ironic nickname for Caesar's family who suffered premature baldness. Or Caesar had gray eyes, known in Latin as Oculus Caesis. The last, most favored by Caesar, was an explanation that it came from the Moorish word Caesi for elephant, as Caesar's ancestor had supposedly killed an elephant in combat, an explanation Caesar made known by minting the image on coins. Beyond this name, Caesar's impact on Rome was wide, too wide to totally describe in this video, his conquest of Gaul, rule as dictator, and paving the way for the Roman Empire. So I'll just focus on his name, which was universally known in his day, and upon his death, he was deified, making the name Caesar that of a god's. While Caesar ruled Roman life, his death found it divided, ruled by his friends Mark Antony, Marcus Lepidus, and his adopted son Gaius Octavius Thurinus, all struggling to succeed Caesar, but his death left his name up for grabs, which Octavius, by right of blood, adopted and exploited, declaring himself Gaius Julius Caesar, which he used to play upon the loyalties of the Romans, building his own power base off that of Caesar's legacy, which worked. Octavius, now Caesar, was proclaimed Augustus after his victory, Mark Antony committed suicide, and Lepidus was driven into exile. In his new rule as emperor, Octavius adopted the full title of Caesar Augustus, making historians grateful as he was now distinguished from the old Caesar, or Julius Caesar. Following in his footsteps, all of Augustus's heirs also adopted the blood name of Caesar by right of Roman custom. Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius, and Nero all adopted the name as propaganda, with, um, eh, varying results. All legal renamings, as relatives of Caesar, they were allowed by Roman custom to. Not until Nero's death though, thus the death of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, Caesar's line, it would shift from name to more of a title. Upon the rise of the Flavian dynasty, the Emperor Galba had adopted the name in the preceding civil war, where Caesar had become a favored designation of usurpers. By 68 AD, its role was confirmed, as Galba bestowed it upon his successor Lucius as a title, morphing it into both the title and a name, which about 60 of all the Roman emperors would bear in some form or another, both preceding and succeeding Galba. And while the title of Caesar simply became another function of the state, used by both emperors and their families, it would survive the state itself. While the Western Rome perished, the Greeks carried on the name of Caesar in the Eastern Rome. The lineage of Rome and its state continued through the Byzantine Empire, though the title of Caesar was diminished by the emperor adopting the more Christian title of Basileus. Caesar shifted into a title for the heirs to the Byzantine throne itself. It persisted though through the history of the Byzantine Empire, though diminished and decaying with the state, by the late Eastern Empire it was only bestowed upon important nobles in the Balkans. That did not destroy it though. The Arabs and Ottomans persisted in referring to the Byzantine emperors as Caesar, and upon conquest of Byzantium, Mehmed the Conqueror adopted the term Kaiser i Rum, or Caesar of Rome, to show his new prestige, as the supposed successor of this Rome, bringing to an end the direct lineage of Caesar through the Roman state, or at least the surviving remnant. Rome had ended, but Latin lived on, even beyond its frontiers. Caesar was so known his name was adopted into other languages, mainly early Germanic spoken by Rome's barbarian conquerors. 
Caesar may have been the first Latin word adopted into the Germanic language, through which English, Germanic, and the other Germanic languages would later emerge, where Caesar came to mean emperor. Caesar evolved into the Old Norse Caesari and the Old English Coser, which was replaced in the Middle Ages by the Norse or Low German Kieser, until the Latin form was eventually repopularized in English by the French as the modern Caesar, while the Low German Kieser would evolve into the Germanic Kaiser, which descended through the Holy Roman Empire into the Austrian Empire as the monarch's title, also later being adopted by the German Empire upon unification, to denote both royalty and a connection to far older empires. Meanwhile, the word Tsar emerged into the Eastern Christian world through Byzantium, as Caesar had emerged into the Western world through Rome, becoming a Slavic language equivalent for emperor. Tsar itself being derived from the old Slavonic Cesari, which emerged from the name Caesar, Originally used to refer to the supreme leader of all Orthodox Christians, it was used by the Byzantine Empire and some Bulgarian monarchs, until it was adopted by Russia as an eretocratic title after Byzantium's collapse in 1453. Ivan III of Russia claimed inheritance of both the role and title through his marriage to the Byzantine Emperor's niece, Sophio Paleologos, declaring Russia the Third Rome through this marriage with the term being officially adopted by Ivan IV, or the Terrible, by crowning himself the Tsar of all Russians, as an absolute monarch, and the supposed universal ruler of all Orthodox Christians. Tsar, as a term, appeared in European languages in 1549, rendered usually as C-Z-A-R, a literal transcription of the Cyrillic title, but in the 19th century, Tsar as T. S. A. R. became a more popular rendering due to French translations, while German retained an adaption of Tsar as Z. A. R., Tsar being an adaption of the Cyrillic spelling into the Latin alphabet, instead of a transliteration of the Cyrillic letters. The Tsar would be the last ruling monarch to retain a translated form of the name Caesar as a title, as, by the end of World War I, the Austrian and German monarchies were dismantled, leaving only Nicholas II as the only ruler to bear the title, but only for a few short months, until he was eventually executed by the Bolsheviks, bringing a final end to the long and storied name of Caesar, at least as a ruler, as no current monarchs retain the title, giving Caesar his 2,000 years of overdue rest. Finally. But that does not mean the name has died out in terminology. The C or Caesarian section is supposedly named for Caesar, a doubtful origin, as the procedure was fatal in antiquity to the mother, and Caesar's mother survived well into his life, making the origin pure folklore. There are two other possible related origins. The legendary Roman king, Numa Pompeius, enacted a law called Lex Caesarea, or Caesar's Law, ordering all dead fetuses be buried outside their mother's wounds, associating it with Caesar through Rome. The second origin is pure language, as the Latin for to cut is cadar, from which the procedure gets its name as partis Caesarius, or Caesarian partition, and birth this way was often seen as special, as the child was not born technically of woman. Speaking of cutting, Caesar's famous haircut has been the savior of many a balding man. Popular enough in his own day, people adopted the style en masse, including his friend Mark Antony. Marlon Brando even donned the do to play Antony on the big screen, propelling it to fame on the modern cultural venue. Modern fame also brings us modern menus, which the Caesar salad is a staple on any. But it is not actually named after THE Caesar, nor is it particularly Roman. The salad was supposedly served up by Caesar, spelled without the A, Cardini, in 1924 at his restaurant in Tijuana, Mexico. Maybe it would have brought him his own fame, had not the name Caesar already had a rather large roster of famous folk. So, despite popular culture, it is unknown if Caesar was a fan of salads or not. In all, few names have had as much sheer popularity as Caesar's. There are many great historical figures in fame and infamy. As a purely secular personality, Caesar's fame and tenacity won him immortality through language, even if it is not his own. After all, do you know what you're named after? A king? or a Caesar.